All right, welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We're continuing with cricket as we head to the massive women's Caribbean Premier League. Deandra Dotton's power hitting and calm leadership steered the Trinbago Knight Riders to a thrilling Super Over win against the Guyana Amazon Warriors to keep alive their hopes of reaching the final. Knight Riders posted 128 for 8 of their 20 overs, led by Dotton's 36 ball, 53. Shaka Pandey chipped in with 25 against Chloe Tryon, 2 for 12, and Karishma Ram Harak, 2 for 19. In reply, the Amazon Warriors scored 128 for 5. Erin Burns top scored with 61, while Shamim Campbell supported with 25. In the Super Over, Knight Riders took first strike and posted 19 runs with 13 coming off Dotton's bat, which included two sixes. Well, the Amazon Warriors could only manage five, losing two wickets, Chloe Tryon for one and Erin Burns without scoring. This is how the points table look after last night's match. All right, so we have the Barbados Royals sitting pretty at the top. Two out of two wins, a total of four points. Guyana Amazon Warriors in second position because of net run rate, um, 0.33. Uh, two points having picked up one win uh, so far and Trinbago Knight Riders picking up one win as well. Well, Nikhil Utam Chandani, he's still with us. Ricardo was unable to run him away. So, Nikhil, you're still with us. What a match that was last night. So, when I thought it was over, it was not over. And then we had the super over. And I was just jumping around my house like a crazy lady. But it was so good. <laughs> yeah, I think great for the tournament, Maria, to have a, a game of that nature where it goes to... The last ball, I mean, I was, I couldn't believe how close it's come down to. At 19 runs from 18 deliveries, yeah. and Aaron Burns there on 58, I thought surely um, Guyana were going to get over the line. And look, I think it's great for the excitement of the competition. I still think I am a bit worried about the batting a lineup of these teams where they're having such big collapses. And I mean, even in TKR's innings, where at one stage when Dotton was going, I thought surely 140, 150, and they lost their way. I think they only scored 31 runs in the last five. So whilst I, I am really happy and love that the cricket has been so close, I think you've had a, an increase in the quality of the league and local bowling, I would say, when you see some of the young talent coming through. I still am wishing and hoping that we can have continuous improvement in the batting side of things as we get deeper into the tournament. Yeah, definitely agree with you there, Nikhil. And you speak about the batting. And one of the things I was concerned about when Deandra Dotton announced that, you know, she's coming out of retirement was that I understood that she's pure class and quality, but you can't help but have that minor doubt in the back of your mind that, you know, I wonder if she's been practicing, how is she looking? She looked so good. She looked as if all she did from retirement to now was practice. Yeah, I thought... To be honest, she looked out of rhythm to start this tournament. But this innings for me was really... It made me remember the DeAndre Dotton of old. And, I mean, we haven't heard about the West Indies squad for the T20 World Cup yet. But I'm sure she's going to be in it. And I'm sure she's going to be a very important member. But if the West Indies have this version of DeAndre Dotton, my word, it I just tells you about her presence at the crease. If Shabnam Ishmael, who bore the final over, the super over that is, could be under that amount of pressure. And as uh, to me, I think Ishmael is, if not the best in the world, one of the best in the world. And even she was under pressure bowling to Dottin, knowing the magnitude of her ball striking. So it shows you, much like the universe boss, um, Chris Gill, it shows you the doubt and fear she can put into bowlers when she's going like she was last night. And I mean, TKR and Dottin should feel um, amazed because I thought at one stage that game was out. Yeah. Uh, with, out of their hands, they would have lost and probably been knocked out as well. But somehow, someway, they were able to recover. And credit to 16-year-old Samara Ramna, 16 years old, to bowl the 18th over, which went for just five runs against Burns and Campbell. I thought that was the start of, of the pressure building and what ended up, in, in the end, winning them the game. Yeah, and you mentioned Shabnim um, a short while ago being, you know, what you think as one of the best um, bowlers in women's cricket in the world. But based on how she went about her duties yesterday, would you, Nikhil, let's just pretend you were the captain of the team, would you have bowled her in that super over? Oh, for sure. I, mean, I think even if you gave me another super over now, I would still bowl her. Um, I think she is world class. Execution, I haven't seen anyone in women's cricket like her. 
Um, I think even, and, and the amazing thing is that she's not playing international cricket, where sometimes you can see that lack of, um, the lack of high quality opposition playing and having an impact on a few players. But there are a few anomalies in the world game. I mean, Meg Lanny, you can talk about Fat Duplessis, I would think of as well. But the way Ishmael went, I think, and I, she's great in this bowling lineup as well. I think with so much spin, Karishma Ramara, who was very good last night, Erin Burns, who's been great with her all-round performance. They've got Lakshman, they've got a few other spin options, Chloe Tryon. Then to have that express space coming from the other end, I think she fits in really nicely into this Guyana bowling attack. And they're going to be, I know they lost last night, but I think if they, on their day, I didn't think they bowled particularly well last night. Uh, probably in the first 10 overs or so against Dottin. But if they are on with their batting as well, I think they are going to be a very tough team to beat. Yeah, and you just referenced um, Dottin's expected um, naming for the T20 World Cup. I see where her teammate, Jess Jonathan, was omitted from the Australia 15 for the T20 World Cup as well after playing, I think, in five World Cup tournaments in the past. So the Aussies are looking, looking beyond her. A, a quick comment. I know we've already spoken about Deandra and uh, Mariah mentioned her as well. But you know what? I, I still don't think Dutton is back to where we know she can be. I saw that she showed um, glimpses, well, more than glimpses, but she showed last night the quality player she is. But I still think she looks a little much rusty to me. Even some of the shots that she played were scoring shots, but the timing uh, a little bit off. I think it was just her overall natural gift and inept mm. talent that saw her having such a profound game last night. But I still see where she is not as sharp as I know she can be, given what we know, you know, she has given to the sport. And that's fair, lads. I think, again, it impacted her heavily to not be involved in international cricket for the year or so that she wasn't, or a couple of years, really. And also the fact that I think she hasn't been in the franchise leagues like she would have hoped. Obviously played at the 100 last year, didn't get back in this year, wasn't at the Women's Premier League. So I think those things and, and the lack of facing that caliber of bowling um, has had an impact. But for her to come and face someone like Ishmael, who is at the top of her game, peak of her powers, and be able to get the 13 out of the 19 in the Super Over, or as you said, you know, show glimpses in that 50 odd. I think she's working her way back. back. And these couple of games here, a camp before the T20 World Cup, I think will all help in her sort of getting ready and, and being prepared for that. Because, I mean, let's face it, the West Indies in international cricket, yes, we've done well against Sri Lanka, etc. But I think in the big tournaments against the best teams, we've missed DeAndre Dutton, particularly for her batting, because it's been really Haley Matthews. Or, or bus. I mean, Stefani Taylor has been such a resident performer for many years, but she's, I think, still working her way back into the team after injury, etc. So I think those three are going to be very important. But for me, Dottin helps take some of that pressure off Hayley Matthews with bat in hand. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Nikhil, you started having uh, the conversation at the top of this segment, just uh, referring to what you would like to see in terms of the improvements with the batting in the tournament. In a more pointed way, though, I would like for you to compare what we have seen in the first two editions of the Women's CPL um, to what we have seen in the first four matches of the 2024 campaign mm. um, across all the areas of the game, batting, bowling and fielding. Well, Ricardo, that's why I like you. You know, you're always a realist. You always bring us back down to earth. What I'll say is, um, I still think, and, and this might sound harsh because I think the scores have been slightly better, but I still think that we can go and improve a long way in terms of our local batters. You look at Aaron Burns getting 250s, obviously Dottin, Haley Matthews, the two standouts, but I think the overseas players have played a huge part with bat in hand, and I don't think our strike rotation, the local batters I'm speaking of particularly, I don't think it's where the West Indies would want it to be. We're seeing what the one thing I've loved, though, is to the young talent coming through. So Ramnath is one. Naya Lachman, I think Jasara Claxton with her seam. I'm really excited about the crop of bowlers that are being developed. And I mean, Ramnath is 16 years old. So just imagine two or three more CPLs, the regional tournaments, what she's going to become when she's 19 or 20, if she can stay and consistently play. But I think we need to find batters where, you know, we can get that strike rotation, we can find consistent boundary scoring. And it's a tough one as well, because the franchises want to win tournaments and they want experienced players. But you can look at a Barbados Royals team who have Janaba Joseph or Trishan Holder on the bench, two young batters who have had a taste of West Indies cricket, who are not really able to get that game time. So from a batting perspective, I'm a bit concerned. But bowling and fielding, I think the catching this year particularly has been the best it's ever been I've seen in West Indies cricket. I thought we've been superb 
to see some of the athleticism in the field. So I've been really happy about those two areas. Yeah, how about the ground fielding? You mentioned the catching specifically. Um, I don't know if personally I've been that impressed with the ground fielding, especially out on the boundaries. Um, your take? Yeah, I'm, I've been trying to figure out. I don't know if it's the Jew factor, if it's the lack of experience and the lights, but again, that would more impact catching as opposed to ground fielding. But the reason I didn't say ground fielding in that um, soliloquy is because I thought it has been disappointing. Uh, even from some of the experienced players as well, I've been very surprised to see the amount of misfields and the amount of runs teams have given away in the field. You're looking at 128 and scores around there. I'm pretty sure 10 to 15 runs are being given away nightly in the field with the ground fielding. I think the catching has been good, but definitely whether it's the Drew factor and the wet ball or the lights and change of, because even last year's women's CPL, they were most of the games were before the men's games. They were in the day. So I don't know. The regional games as well will also be in the daytime. So I don't know how much experience they have under the lights, but I do think it is probably the biggest area of improvement um, looking at the first four matches. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Nikhil, over the course of the next few days, you'll do your survey and get from the players if there are any particular <laughs> issues that they're having out in the field. Um, Lance just mentioned um, Jess Johansson out of the Australia squad for the T20 World Cup. I wondered, actually, uh, when I saw a number of these Australians um, coming to the WCPL, I really did wonder if that meant it was about getting them some extra practice ahead of the World Cup, or it was that they were not in the plans of the Australian selectors going into the World Cup. Um, I guess this partly answers that question. I do want to get from your standpoint, though, based on what you have seen so far, whether the West Indies squad will be a difficult one to finalize, to, um, to select on the part of the selectors. Definitely. Um, I think the West Indies selectors have gone for seniority. They've gone for experience in the past. But I really hope, especially with the bowlers that we've seen, Ricardo, I, I hope that we are able to turn the page and go and opt for some of the younger members, even if it's a case where I think what I've heard is that they're going to pick up a 20-member squad before they actually cut it down to 15. Even if you get some of those younger players in the 20, I think to rub shoulders and spend time around Haley Matthews, Zeta James, who I think has come back as a 10 times better player this year, a more complete player, especially looking at her batting. She always speaks about how much she idolizes Haley Matthews, and she would have spent a year in West Indies cricket not playing necessarily every game, but talking to Haley, practicing with Haley, and I think working on her skills. So to be in that high performance environment where, unfortunately, our women's cricket, you don't have those environments to learn like in Australia or in England for our women when you go back to your regional territories. I think it would go a long way in getting some of these younger members just to get a taste of what it's like, what this level is like, and something to aspire to as well. Yes, we played the WCPL, but international cricket and a T20 World Cup, I mean, that's the pinnacle right there. So I would love to see a few of those younger members being put into that squad. Yeah, very much fair, of course. Another WCPL match coming up tonight live on Sportsmax. We'll have to get out of here five minutes earlier than usual to accommodate that game. Um, Barbados Royals versus the Guyana Amazon Warriors. Nikhil, who is taking it tonight? I think Guyana, you know, I, I said Barbados are going to win the tournament, but I think Guyana, are, I like the cricket they're playing, and I think the spin that they have is a handful for teams. So I expect that spin to be maybe just out Fox. They have to get Hayley Matthews. It's really, she's been the heartbeat of that batting lineup. And, she, you know, 250s, who you never know. Yeah, the cricket is a funny game. It definitely is. Nikhil Utam Chandani, this time we can say goodbye Now for I'll good leave. for today. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great one, man. Take care. Thanks a lot for having me, guys. All right, Nikhil Utam Chandani. Let's take a break. Still so much more to come on the Sportsmax Zone, including La Liga. And we have some track and field to talk as well. Stay with us.